Order. The question is that the motion be agreed to, and I call the honourable member for Fisher. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak on this very important motion, and I want to acknowledge the member for Tangy and uh, a great speech uh, from the heart. And uh, I want to acknowledge all. I'm not too sure of members on the opposite side, but I know that uh, members on our side of the chamber, the leader of the opposition, member for Wide Bay, member for Cowper, member for La Trobe and uh, any others that I may have missed, I apologise, for their service to uh, policing in this, uh, in this country. It's a tough job. Uh, I've never served as a police officer. I have a, a nephew uh, that is currently serving, uh, and uh, I want to pass on my acknowledgement and thanks for the great work that they do. Our police personnel are exceptional, but their work is essential. I recently visited the Australian Centre to Counter Child Exploitation in Brisbane as part of my continuing work to keep kids safe, particularly with the emerging threats posed by advancing technology. The extent of the risks faced by vulnerable Australians, and particularly kids, highlights the crucial role police and law enforcement have to play in making our communities safer. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, I want to come at this uh, from a slightly different angle. We talk about mental health a lot in this place. We talk about mental health uh, particularly in relation to veterans, and that's very important. But from my experience uh, as a, a, uh, an ex-barrister and my dealings with a lot of police officers, a lot of police officers and, in fact, emergency service personnel suffer terribly from PTSD. And, uh, the member for Tangy touched on this uh, a moment ago of his own personal experience. It's right that we acknowledge uh, our veterans from the Defence Force and the work that they do and the risks that they run. But the average Australian emergency service personnel will more than likely see far more death and carnage than what many of our serving personnel see, especially in peacetime. And yet we so very rarely talk about the mental health of our emergency service personnel, particularly our police. These are the men and women who will come out to your house when there is a call made out in relation to a domestic violence dispute, whether the house is being burgled, whether there's an accident on the, on the highway, all sorts of multitude of reasons why we pick up that call, that phone and ring triple O. They don't sit and draw lots as to who's going to go out. They do it. They do it because of a sense of duty, and by and large, they do it extremely well. And this country is indebted to the services of our policing, both at a state and territory level and at a federal level. And it's important that we have this conversation around their well-being. That's why I was very proud to advocate for and see Fortum share in $11.5 million in response to the Black, fires, Black Summer bushfires. And again, I was delighted that an additional $1.4 million was provided in the 22-23 federal budget for Fortum Australia. The organisation was launched to do for law enforcement and emergency service workers what Soldier On has done for our defence personnel. And it is extraordinary work. A project in my electorate which I've been proud to support and in part secure is the National PTSD Centre to be housed in my electorate thanks to $8.3 million secured under the coalition. The centre is the first of its kind in this country which deals with the, the research and treatment of emergency service personnel and defence personnel who suffer from PTSD. I want to give a big shout out to the University of the Sunshine Coast team for their leadership in this sector. Uh, they are doing tremendous work with the Thompson Institute, and I salute them. Their work is making a difference right across the country. And I couldn't be prouder of our government when we were in government, providing in excess of $20 million to the Thompson Institute for this sort of research. Thanks to their efforts, ably supported by this coalition government, 
Um, law enforcement agencies seized 39 tonnes of drugs and chemical precursors in 2021 alone. We saw mandatory minimum sentencing and tougher penalties for drug and illegal firearm trafficking. We will stand by the great work that our police services continue to do, and we are very, very proud of the work that they do. And looking after them is the least we can do.